I'll just text you later, Pastor. Oh, I can stop right now. You want to do? Oh that? no, no, it's okay. I can. This is not as urgent. I can text you later. Okay. And then we will we will square it away then. All right. Who wants to open us with in prayer? Anyone? Anyone? Everyone's volunteering. I do. I do. I do. Okay. Yes. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Lord, for a beautiful morning. Thank you, Lord, that we are alive. And thank you for the opportunity to learn more about um, whatever is going to be taught, we'll speak about. And let's open our heart, our mind to receive it and to allow it to be part of us. Thank yeah. you. And thank you. And thank you. Hey, man. Hey, man. Great prayer. Thank you so much for that. So as we were discussing about desire and what you're desiring and what you're manifesting, what you're creating, whatsoever you desire in the book of Mark is very explicit. So last week we talked about following the thread of desire. So today we'll be talking about desire is everything. So when Melissa asked the question about um, that manifestation of what she was desiring, remember not to separate anything. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yes, no, maybe so? Uh, yes. yes. Cool. All right, any questions, comments, concerns? Any by the ways? Who got, who got a praise report? <laughs> Anyone? Everyone should have a praise report. Have one. Yes, go for it. So um, it's, I've, I've, been, I've been focusing a lot about uh, my personal finances for the past um, few months now. Uh -huh. And uh, I, I, I told myself, man, if only I have like, you know, uh, my, my, my investments was actually growing pretty well because, because looking at everything, economy went down quite a bit, but because of COVID and everything. Mm -hmm. And I told myself, yeah, you know what? I think it's, everything's going to be okay. And so yesterday I texted my mentor, also my um, financial advisor, mm -hmm. um, and, and we were just chatting. And, and, and he got back to me and he was like, hey, did you know that the amount that you've invested to date for your, for your savings account uh, is, is actually growing by 13%? I was like, 13%? No way. It's like, yeah, 13%. This is the largest that we've seen today that, that right. yours has grown. I was like, yes, okay, so I'm winning. So, <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen to that. Thank you for that. That is such a blessing. Thank you, Rufino, for joining us. We really appreciate you taking time out of your schedule. Thank you, Eltonio Williams, for joining us, all students. Any, any by the ways, questions, praise reports before we get started? We're talking about desire, so anyone, anyone, praise reports? Everyone should have another praise report. Come on, everyone. Yes, Adrian, oh my goodness, hallelujah. <laughs> Go for it. Um, okay, so... I've been kind of like resting from working out in the gym because uh, I'm injured. Um, but I think just recently this week, I was starting to feel a lot better. Mm -hmm. uh, I was starting to kind of like able to do some of the exercises that I wasn't able to do before. It's been maybe two and a half months now and I'm really missing working out. So I think I'm aiming for January before I can start my regular routine again. Mm. All right. So how about we speed that process up? Is that what you would like? Yes. <laughs> that is too easy. Oh, I thought we had something hard. <laughs> we would suggest, and this is just a suggestion, that when you reflect on the injury, send it love. And what we mean by that is don't look at it as it being a hindrance. Look at it as a blessing to take time to reflect and really get to know thyself. Because as you get to know thyself, now you'll be able to create more clearly of what you're wanting in terms of your business. So this is more not in terms of a hurtful energy to stop you or slow you down, but it's more something that you can process because you have to remember this. It's self-created. Then you have to say, why did I create this within my body? What is this that I'm 
needing to heal from, not just the physical portion of it, but what is it within me on the spiritual aspect that I need to heal of myself? Because when God created the body, he created the whole body. This is why you are holy. So it is by your faith that will make you whole and how you get there is, as we always teach, when you sit down as the five minutes, let me ask you a question. As you were sleeping, could you feel that pain? No. When you are distracted by something else that is of more importance, do you feel that pain? No. It is only when you bring the attention back when there's, quote unquote, nothing going on. Oh, here's the body. Oh, I'm gonna notice the body. The mm. body, there's a limitation. We would like to say, get the limitations out and just rejoice in the trouble, if you will. So as you sit down as the five minutes or 10 or however you choose, really take those deep breaths. And really we would like you to focus on that area that is injured. And we want you to see it whole. We want you to see it strong. We want you to send it love. We don't want you to judge it. When it comes up and it bothers you, say, hey, let me stop because there's something I need to learn. It's there to teach you. Don't look at it as a bad thing. Is that okay? Mm -hmm. Well, we hope you receive that by love and by faith because we see great, 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 great things of you because you are a wonderful creator. And just as you created your business, you can create healing within your body. It's just a matter of thought. You'll be surprised that if you really talk to your body with love and with gentleness and without harshness or, or agitation, you would find that the speeding process of your body would heal much faster. And we would say that to every single one of you, including your quote unquote common cold, your flus, your dementia, your cancers, all of it. Amen? Yes. yes. Amen, Pastor. Any others? Praise God. Uh, oh, hallelujah, Lily. All right. Any other praise reports, by the ways? No one? All right. If not, let us get started. We're on page 714 of Master of Christ Consciousness for everyone who has that material. Yeah. And the title this morning will be Desire is Everything. And we're doing a follow-up from last week that was following the thread of desire. And we take this out of really the biblical scriptures of Mark, which is really where I begin to teach you all the five. Ask, whatsoever you desire. Well, people haven't really thought about what they desire before they ask in prayer. And then when it is delivered to them, they judge it. I don't like it. I don't want it. Make sense? Yes. We would say you reap what you sow. So if you reap what you sow, bless it for the good, the holy, and the beautiful. Because if you notice when we always say whatsoever you desire, it is always before you get to the prayer. It is always before you get to the asking we always include the desire before the asking. Mm. Student proposed a question to me that goes in alignment with this where, does the thoughts control you or do you control the thoughts? Mm. <laughs> what would you all say? Supposedly we control the thoughts, but most of the time it's the other way around. <laughs> okay, great answer. Anyone else? Because this is in alignment with what you're wanting. Because when the thought comes, that is what the desire is created. Everyone understand? As soon as the thought comes, I want a car. Desire is there. Yeah. You understand? Yes. It, uh, it always starts with the needing or the, we, we don't like to use the word the need the manifestation of your heart is where it would be created from. Does that make sense? Yeah. So when you're wanting something, 
Don't judge it because as soon as you judge it, as soon as you label it in the negative, it's going to get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And then you're going to attract those type of things that you're not wanting, even though the words come out, I want to be rich. And then there's still poverty. So the mind, body, and spirit have to be in alignment. And when we say an alignment, you are two ways. We would, we would say you were in the love or in fear, correct? Yes. Well, the simplest way to think about it, you're either connected to God or you're not connected to God. Because that is the truth of what we're saying, because God is love. Fear is your ego. Cancer is masters. You either love one or hate the other. Which one do you desire more? To be in alignment with source creator, which is in you? Absolutely. So how is desire everything on question number one? How is desire everything? What is desire? <laughs> I think we I think we answered in the last one mm -hmm. because each time you ask of something, you're what? Desiring of that that you're wanting. Mm -hmm. And if you don't know how to, as we last week, follow that thread of desire, then you will not understand how desire is everything. Yeah. Correct? So how is desire everything? Whatsoever I desire when I pray. So how is desire everything? <laughs> yes, this is a setup. This is a setup trick question, students. It's a great one too. We would not, we would like you to ponder this question realistically. Because if you don't understand that, then you really hit and miss in terms of what you're asking for in your prayers. Whatsoever you desire, when you what? Pray. What is pray? Pray is asking. Asking what? God for that that you are wanting from your heart. Mm -hmm. Your heart desire. So if I truly desire to be rich, I have to take on the rich mindset. I have to look at everything in my house. I don't care if the there's holes in the ceiling, in the walls. I don't care if there's roaches and rats. I have to look at that and go, this is my kingdom and it is beautiful not oh man this is a dump <laughs> you see yes so desire is everything and we'll explain more about how is desire everything <clears throat> what is the expression of action what is the expression of action <laughs> what's the subject of the title desire Ah, there's your answer. <laughs> because the expression of your action is where the desire comes from. Mm. Does that make sense? Yeah. We'll elaborate more on that also. Question. Who among you has not felt conflicted about desire? <laughs> Everyone can raise their hand because... Everyone has created something and went, ooh, I don't like that. Yeah. Everyone has been conflicted about, what, and especially when people are praying in, without no faith, you really see there's conflict there. In other words, here's, here's a great example. Pastor, I want to be healed. Praise God. Well, let's pray for healing. You're healed. And then they go off and tell everybody how sick they are. How you doing? Oh, I'm sick as a dog. Oh, I can't. And then all of a sudden we go, wait a minute. One minute you were, oh, hallelujah, praise the Lord, and I'm healed. But then 30 minutes later, you're sick as a dog. There is conflict. Because when someone asked you, even though you might not have felt it in your body, how you're doing, you should have said, hallelujah, I'm healed. Yes. Mm. Yes. Because rejoicing in trouble means to acknowledge that God has a way out. Is anything too hard for God? Absolutely not. God is not the author of confusion. So there should be no confliction of what you're desiring. This is what I want. This is why I want it. What do I want? Why do I want it? This is why we introduce you to that, because many conflicted it. Matter of fact, Sudi, can we, we will, if we can, use you with the example of when you lost the keys. Mm -hmm. 
or when the keys were were trapped. Yeah. And, well, it, it it just simply doesn't work. The key doesn't work. Oh, the key was inside the pot, and nobody knows it was there until you mentioned it. <laughs> but look at the but look at the conflict of that desire. Mm. Even though people don't want to acknowledge that desire, that was still a desire. Panic. I'm desiring panic. What do I want and why do I want it? I want to be, I want my feathers riled up. Why? Because the keys, I can't get in. We can't go home. It's, it's far. Duh. Yeah. Ah. Yes. And then somebody goes, wait a minute, push the little button. Beep. <laughs> and now all of a sudden, we went from 10 to 1 on mm -hmm. the emotional scale. Now their calmness came in because there's no conflict because now the same problem your solution was in born simultaneously. I hope everyone caught that. Your problems and answers are born simultaneously. They're yes. created together. And if you're not aware of that, then you will get the conflict of that desire. The other desire is when you go to the doctor and thank God for doctors, because without doctors, half of you would be dead. But if you are in your faith, really in your faith, and understand who you are as God, as a child of God, as an extension of God, all of the above, as a kingdom citizen, when you go in for the prognosis and they give you, quote unquote, what you would call bad news about your health, you should jump off the table and say, praise the Lord, hallelujah, I am healed by the blood. And they're going to, wait a minute, you're going to die in six months. And you should be dancing around that table. You should be hugging and half. Hey! But that goes beyond the logical mind, does it not? Yes. Because there's the conflict. Because here's the person that you've come to trust. So mm -hmm. now we would say this. You cannot serve two masters. You either love one or hate the other. So do you trust the man whom God has sent you, the doctor? Or do you trust the healing power of God because he's giving you what you would call bad news but then we would tell you hey here's the good news I can have healing within my body mm -hmm. everyone remember yeah okay who among you has not been taught that desires evil I want more money why oh because I want to build a house I want to oh you been oh that's selfish oh you're and they come up with all these religious words on why you can't have the desire. Am I right or wrong? <laughs> yeah, they'll, they'll tell you uh, money is the root of all evil. I was waiting for somebody. Thank you. I would just, and this is why people cannot get the things they're desiring because now there's a conflict with your money. So now you want more money, but now somebody came and told you that the root of money is what? Evil. So now you don't know what to do. Because now when I get a whole lot of money, I feel guilty about it because, oh my gosh, I'm an evil person because I've created all this money. I've created, really? But then who wants to be poor? Nobody. Nobody. But it, here's the thing, misery love company, does it not? Yeah. You want the money, but then there's the conflict of it being evil. So then I don't want the money. I want money, but I don't want the money. And then here's the thing. I just want just enough just to survive. The Lord will provide me with everything. And then you see the guy who rolls by with the Lamborghini or the Mercedes or the Rolls Royce has a big pretty house and, and you condemn him. Oh, how dare he have a big house and a big car and a fancy pool and a private jet? How dare he or she? How dare he? I'm living, I'm driving my Hyundai. <laughs> Faster. <laughs> Hyundai. Faster. You know that we always have this thinking that that we don't look it that way. Okay, mm -hmm. money, uh, we don't look it as money as uh, the root of all evil. Is uh, uh, money is actually good if you put it into good use. We would yes. say this: money is neither good or evil. Money is perceptual. Yes. 
Yes. So because it depends on the individual. Yes. So if you are a kingdom citizen and you have everything and own everything, you don't need anything because you can decree everything because now you know who you are as a child of God. Because now you understand it's okay for me to have a lot of money because now I am okay with having a lot of money because now I know how to manage and utilize the money because now I'm forgiving of this money. Wow. The more I give of the money, the more money I receive. Ain't that a concept? <laughs> but people look at the money and that becomes the value. That becomes the idol. That becomes the God. That's why it's evil. But it was the no offense against the church, but it was the church who instituted the idea. But then come Sunday, they want your collection. They want your evil, they want your evil collection. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they gonna pray over it, make good. <laughs> but watch this. And and we're we are we are we are jesting. We mean no harm by this. But let's say that I go and I gamble and I hit. $11.5 million and I bring it to the church and I tell the pastor, Pastor Meekins, I went to the casino and I hit $11.5 million and I want to give you $2 million. Do you really think I'm going to quote that scripture to him and go, oh, well, money is the root of all evil. Or do you really think, <laughs> am I going to welcome him with open and bless you? Hallelujah. And we're going to sing a song and we're going to do a dance, aren't we not? Yes. Even, though you, even though you win the money by gambling, which is not allowed. <laughs> I'm not going to mention the gamble, not one time of it being evil. Matter of fact, I'm going to put him on the front row. I might even put him up in the pulpit. Might give him a shiny bright light. Might announce his name every Sunday morning. Every, and this is what we see. People come in and drop a large amount of money in the church. And all of a sudden, now that scripture goes out the window. No mention. Matter of fact, we're just going to skip over that one. Oh, we're going to mark. <laughs> we're not going to talk about finances today. <laughs> mm -hmm. Makes sense. So a lot has been taught in those terms, and I'm glad Sudi brought that, that scripture up because it is a conflicting scripture, and this is why people struggle every single day with their finances. Mm -hmm. Question number five. Have you not feared at times, the welling up of desire within you? Yes, you have. Yes. And a lot of you have suppressed it because if you go to question four, if you get a lot of money, then here it is. I want money, but then here comes the money and now I'm afraid to tell the money. Mm -hmm. Because if I make a confession before the church, now here comes the judgment. Now here comes the hands that look like cups. Mm -hmm. And if I don't get according to what they think is old, now I'm not a cheerful giver. Now I'm selfish. Now the scripture becomes applicable again. Mm -hmm. Affirmation. Everyone say this with me. I desire. I desire. An intimate relationship. An intimate relationship. With God. With God. And so it is. And so it is. Thank you. All right. Take a moment right now and let the body relax. Imagine that you can move back from being the actor in the play of your life to being the director and the producer. Mm -hmm. I want everyone to think about that. Mm -hmm. As you sit in your comfortable chairs, in your space, I want you to imagine that you are no longer the actor, but you are the director and the producer of your life. Mm -hmm. And from this moment forward, you will continue to be the director and the producer of your life. Amen? Amen. We would like you to imagine where you're sitting in your studio and you're editing the story of your life. When we say editing the story of life, we do not say with that with judgment. Mm. Amen, Pastor. Amen. You're looking at all the little clips of film, clips from the time you were birthed, the time you went to kindergarten, the time you were baptized, the time you fell in love, the time you first lost your virginity, the first time you ate sweet apple pie, the first time you took a journey, the first time you decided to go to the movie, the first time you went to college, the first time for everything, or the time you took a job or that job or, or whatever. 
you physically move to that physical location. Mm -hmm. Look closely and see if it's not true that for every action you have ever done, for every decision you have ever made, after trying to analyze it all, is there not underneath the energy of what? Desire. Yes. Like this. What happens if all of you get thirsty? What will you do? Go Desire to drink. What kind of drink are you going to drink, Sudi? Throw one out. <laughs> Coffee. <laughs> Alrighty. Adrian, what are you going to drink? Uh, water. Water. Okay. Water. Anton, what, what are you drinking? Coffee. I, I, okay. We can go. So now, what will you do to go get those things that you just desired? I do. You're going to physically get up and go to your kitchen. And you're going to open up the refrigerator and you're going to get that water or you're going to go to the coffee maker and you're going to get the, the beans or the, the, your favorite um, yeah. roundings. Action. 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 Yeah. There it is. It's action. Action. Yes. Action. So underneath is the energy of action, the desire. Mm -hmm. Or in truth, you do not lift the body from the couch to go to the refrigerator without the desire to eat or to drink. Or to just open up and see if that little light bulb comes on. <laughs> Great mystery it is. Does it turn off when you close it? No. All right. Something calls you into expression, and Sister Student said it well, of action. It is desire. No one enters into an intimate relationship without the energy of desire. I want that to resonate. Yeah. Or what two have ever looked upon, and now let me say this, we're not talking about arranged marriages from different cultures. We're not talking about that. This is in general. But what two have ever looked upon one another and said, I don't feel any desire whatsoever, but let's get married, have children, and raise a family. <laughs> oh, I don't see too many hands. Okay. <laughs> Somebody read that one? Look closely and see if it is not true. No, nope. Seven fifteen. Thank you, sir. Page seven fifteen. You desire that energy. Desire is that energy which brings forth mm -hmm. always the creation of the death of the ocean itself. And yet, who among you? has not felt conflicted about desire. Mm -hmm. Who among you has not been taught that desire is evil? Who among you have not been taught that desire is to be great? Mm -hmm. Who among you has not been taught that desire is for material comfort and some sort of lot of spiritual path? Look well within your soul and see if this is true, if this is not true. Thank you, sir. Everyone understand that? Yes. Makes sense. You want to read the next one? <clears throat> there be not fear to find the living of, of desire with me. Mm -hmm. For as I look upon your plane, there are many who become paralyzed with fear just because they desire to have a full title. <laughs> so afraid of, so afraid of, so afraid are fear, so afraid are they that if they even do that desire, so being that ice cream will cause their <laughs> body to blow. So that brain is the function. Oh, and we'll even go further. I'm going to get fat if I eat this. Adrian, how many people have you heard? Have you, hey, if you're going to eat this it's ice cream at 10 o'clock, what's going to happen? I'm going to pick up pounds. <laughs> get depressed and eat and eat and eat and eat ice cream. Love the chocolate ice cream with the whipped cream and the cherry on top and the, uh, the milk. <laughs> yeah. And they guilt trip themselves about that desire instead of just going to get the bowl of ice cream and working, going to work it off. Is it okay? Mm -hmm. Look at the rational. I'm going to get fat. I'm going to get bloated. I'm going to get all these things and not enjoy the ice cream, even though that really want that ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> Kind of how many of you have not carried the beliefs taught to you by the language. And if you feel an energy of desire long enough within you, then you look 
Everyone hear that? Yeah. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. In other words, here's what we're saying. If someone had a thought, let's say, here's a great example. A young woman walks by or a young man walks by and you think he or she is attractive and you're walking with your spouse and you think, oh, wow, they're attractive or they're fine or whatever the case might be, whatever your thought is, all of a sudden, the mind comes in and goes, oh, you have sinned against God. You sinned against your body. Oh, you cheated. You committed adultery. You become frankly because of the thought. And this is what conflicts the people. You've done nothing other than the thought. Now, I know there's going to be a lot of debate about that, but if you really stay in the place of love and neutrality, then it wouldn't be a big issue. Correct? Because you go back to what if everybody could read your thoughts? What type of world would it be? Yeah. Now, you couldn't hide anything. So now, watch this. There would be nothing to, quote unquote, be sinned against God. Yes. Everyone would know your thoughts. How could you sin against someone when you know their thoughts? Adrian would walk into the room, and all of a sudden, she's trying to wipe the ice cream off her mouth. <laughs> hide <laughs> In the spoon. <laughs> right? Yeah. Mm. Yes. Pastor, Pastor, so the only thing we can do, the only thing if we have such thought, like you said, we quickly say, okay, okay, neutral, neutral, go to neutral. You know, erase it. No. Here's, and because here's what happened. As soon as you do that, does that thought get bigger? Oh, yeah. Yeah, sure it does. No, just stop stop the thought. You already know. You already know. So just sure. stop the thought and then well, let's go deeper. Like, let's go deeper. How do you how do you thought how do you stop the thought? Okay. Because you, you remember you told me you told you told us satisfying yeah. and non-satisfying. There it is, right there. That is the answer right there. Is this a satisfying thought? Because what we're doing is teaching you the discipline and the vigilance to be aware of the mind of God. Is this the mind of God to have a, this thought that is not pleasing within the body? And if not, how can I change the thought? I can think about something else. I don't have to physically go anywhere. I don't physically have to do anything. I can just merely be where I am in my now and change my thought. I can think of a memory of, of being with my mom in, in Fort Worth, Texas. Playing with the Doberman Pinchers. You know what I'm saying? Also, you can take the thought. Does that make sense? Yes. But here's what, here's what happens. Humans are creatures of habit. And it's very easy to fall in back into a what? Habit. Mm. So as soon as you fall back into the habit, it's hard to go into the place of neutrality to not have that thought, as Melissa's um, describing because in order to be aware of satisfying, not satisfying, you have to come to that place of what does it feel like in the body? Is my body satisfied with what it's feeling or is it not? Because if I'm not aware of that, then I begin to speak that that I do not want. Does that make sense? Yeah, I don't want this, I don't want that. And the more you push that I don't want, the bigger it gets because now there's a conjoining thought. Here's the ex coming up. Oh, couldn't stand her. Hated her guts. Hated his guts. <laughs> mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, how do you have a satisfying thought if there's an abuse? Does that make, and that's a very serious question. Mm -hmm. Because it's hard for people to think a satisfying thought if that thought comes up and there's abuse or if they feel victimized. Mm -hmm. It takes great discipline. But here's where you have to really trust in the Lord with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your heart. This is where you have to let the Holy Spirit come in and comfort in your spirit. 
and that comfort is unconditional love because love never fails. Then you would have to ask yourself, am I in that present moment right now? No. Did I make it through it? Absolutely. Here I stand. That makes sense. Now it's easier to have a satisfying thought, not satisfying thought. But if you're in that situation and somebody's punching you in the face, how can you really have a satisfying thought? How can you be in a place of neutrality? Mm -hmm. So these are factors that we would have to, to inject because this is what humans do because this is human nature. So faster, remember you teach us? <laughs> it's always what you teach us. It's hard to, uh, it's, sometimes when you're in that situation, you forgot, you forget, you know, but uh, you teach us, okay, what can I do and what can I say yeah. to Susan? Broken. <laughs> I was waiting and she got it. Holy Spirit, what can I do to soothe this person's what? Broken heart. Is that not a desire? What are you desiring for them? One, to stop beating you up. Mm -hmm. The desire for them to have their heart changed. So they could what? Be a better version of themselves. So that you can be a what? Better version of yourself. Mm -hmm. so now that you can learn, hey, I don't have to always play with this energy. I can take my ball because I know who I am and go elsewhere. Because that now, is also a show of love, right, Pastor? Absolutely, man, because what? Love never what? Fails. Love is all there is. God is what? Love. Once we interject that formula, that equation into it, how can you lose? Holy Spirit, what can I do to soothe my brother or sister's broken heart? Now you begin to see. Also, as Mary and Melissa were speaking yesterday, when you're in those type of situations, as you sit as five minutes in your prayer, see that person in love. Meet them in the spirit. Talk to them. Hard to do, but this is the practice that you have to do. This way, this way it keeps you out of judgment. Keeps you out of separation. Hopefully that helps someone. <clears throat> Make sense? Mm -hmm. Yet I say unto you, would you exist if God had feared the desire to create and extend love by forming you, at the same time giving you infinite freedom of choice? If God had fear of creating you, we none of us would be here. Yeah. <clears throat> without desire, without desire, look around. Not only would you see nothing, but there would also be nothing to do to see or to the sea. Everything is the effect of what? Desire. desire. Everything is the effect of desire. Come then to see that desire is not evil. It is not to be feared. It is to be what? Mastered. Desire is to be mastered. Whatsoever you desire, who is it on? It's on you. Let them have dominion. God took his hands off of it, even though he is involved in all of it. And when you're in alignment with that. For control, the need to control is an effect of energy of fear, not love. So when there's an abuse or I want to abuse you or victimize, there's the need to control. That's fear, not love. Mastery of desire comes when you recognize that you are safe to feel whatever wave of desire might come up through your consciousness because you decide whether or not you will act on it whether you will bring it into the field of manifestation. Do you have to act on every desire? No, of course not. Angry people driving on the freeway who have road rage and someone cuts them off, they have a desire to run them over with their cars <laughs> or chase them down and lean on the horn and give them the middle finger and give them some, some colorful words. <laughs> of expression <laughs> and we see it often the power of choice is the one power that can never be taken from you is your power of choice talk about the choice then you have already 
have perfect mastery of it because nothing you have ever experienced comes to you without your decision to allow it into the field of manifestation. So when we say you created it, most people don't want to accept the responsibility. I drew this unto myself. I am reaping what I'm sowing. This is the law of attraction. This is the desire of my heart. Pastor, I would never desire that. And why are you in it? Change it. I can't change it. This is why. You just said those words. And you are what you speak. The universe doesn't know the difference. As soon as you say I can't, it is impossible, impossible for you to get the desire of what you're wanting. As soon as you say can't, shouldn't, wouldn't, coulda, woulda, yeah. all those words, you've just limited yourself. Mm -hmm. Desire is something that wells up that from the depth beyond yourself that can be looked at with perfect innocence and with the wonder of a child. This is why it in your holy scripture it says, be ye like little children. Mm -hmm. Why? Because children look at things with innocence. They don't judge it. Especially seven years and below. The very act of turning to allow and welcome desire is not something that will sidetrack you from the path of awakening, but will take you vertically into the heart of God. Or whoever created, God creates. I hope y'all hear me well. You will need to heal your conflicted perceptions about desire. I hope every, if you understand that, everyone say amen. Amen. All right. There are many who call on my brother Yeshua ben Joseph, Jesus Christ, and pray. There is not an hour in your time frame in which there is not many of you on your plane, somewhere upon your planet, who are praying to Yeshua ben Joseph, Jesus Christ, and want their hearts to be filled with Christ. Yet, at the very same time, they're scared to death of an energy that wants to move because they've been taught to fear and suppress desire. Desire is like the liquid of life that moves through the stem of the rose and allows the petals to radiate with glorious color. When you block the flow of desire, the petals cannot be nourished. Death begins to occur. Death of the heart, death of the soul, and lifelessness. If you were to walk down one of your city streets and truly look into the eyes of everyone you see, would you not recognize that death seems to have already made a home in the minds that are many of living? Say yes, Pastor. Yes, Pastor. Matter of fact, let me close my eyes. Some of y'all have looked in the mirror and saw the same thing. I'm going to look that way. I'm not talking. To... <laughs> I don't want y'all mad at me. <laughs> let me talk about me. I've looked in the mirror and had that thought. Me. Death of dreams, death of hope, death of worthiness, death of playfulness, death of true power, and death of union with their source and creator has already taken place. They're hopeless. Mm -hmm. They're fearful. They're in judgment. They're already in their mind. They're already dead. Hmm. Just a thought. Everyone who, re who read these words had this experience of seeing this in others. Yes. Yes. You see it within someone who is homeless. If you see it, someone who is in fear. If you see who one who has been victimized, if you've been a victim, if someone stole material, then there's um, there's a death of of victimization, of not being safe, not being protected, not being worthy. All these things, fear. I want to, everyone to hear this and hear this well. Healing, Adrian, requires, and wait a minute, let me say, Sudi, Ann, student, Rufino, Lily, Melissa, Anson, pastor, and everyone else. <laughs> mm -hmm. Healing requires the willingness to feel desire, to see it as good, and to see it as holy. This slide is written, rejoice in trouble. And again, rejoice. Does that not mean that if you feel the desire that it might not become twisted by the ego pattern in your mind? Of course not. 
there is always the possibility that desire will be twisted to meet the needs of the egoic mind within you. But rest assured, if it does, who has done it? You. Mm -hmm. Always with it, you. You have known that the desire is good, but you suppressed it. Those times when desire came forth and you let it become twisted into serving the goal of the ego, you always knew perfectly well what you were doing. You were the decision maker. Can someone read the next one? Um, you have learned that for to fear desire because that fear is the effect of fearing yourself. And that is what cripples you. Ooh, that is what cuts off the creative flow. Hmm. That is what leads to everything your world knows as the multitude of psychological diseases. Hmm. An unwillingness to trust oneself, an unwillingness to love oneself, and the belief that the desire that move up through your beingness are something evil and dark. Hmm. Can I read that again? And I thank you, Adrian, for reading that. But I want everyone to hear this very clearly. You have learned, therefore, to fear desire because that fear is the effect of fearing yourself. And that is what cripples you. That is what cuts you off the creative flow. This is what stops all your prayers from being answered. Mm -hmm. What stops all your desires from coming forth. This is where you have separated yourself from God, not the other way around, and you have cut off that creative flow, which comes from source creator, that which you call God. Mm -hmm. That is what leads to everything in your world known as the multitude of psychological what? This eases, an unwillingness to trust oneself, an unwillingness to love oneself and the belief, the desire that move up through your beingness or something evil. So. Is God good? Yes. So if greater is he who is in you, then aren't you good? Yes. <laughs> we just want to add some logic to that because this is where your diseases are created. Does that make sense? Yes. When you cut yourself off from God, this is when the sickness and diseases and your psychological diseases begin to occur in the body because now you begin to lay them evil and dark, sin. You think that if you can only stamp them out of your being, you could remain in control and everybody would like you because you would conform to the smallness and the littleness that is worship in human consciousness. Understand well the next axiom we give you. The only relationship that holds any value at all is your relationship with God, your creative source, the depth of the ocean. The only relationship that holds any value is what? Your relationship with God. Not only that, your intimate relationship with God. Right away, the mind says, but what about my mate? What about my parents? What about the president? What about the postmaster? What about my dog? What about my cat? You will come up with a million examples of relationship that surely have great importance. The only one that holds value in relationship with God is that. For when, for when that is in alignment, all of your creations, your choices for relationships, and how you will be within them will flow effortlessly from that alignment. Why? Because now who does the work? God does the work. Mm -hmm makes sense therefore seek first the kingdom and all these things will be added unto you do not try to create a rose by starting with the petals but do not rush the roots and flower and the flower must blossom mm -hmm. we're going to close quickly but we would like to take you into the bible scriptures of the book of mark in chapter 11 where the master jesus went to this fig tree and it did not bear fruit and he was hungry and it was in the morning and he was getting ready to travel on to the next city. And he went to this tree, this huge, 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 huge tree that did not bear fruit that was in season to bear fruit. And he spoke nine words, thou shalt not produce from thee forevermore. Nine words. And as they left, I'm a fast forward to Mark chapter 11 and verse 22, or I'm sorry, 20. One, 
Peter notices this tree that had dried up at the root. Notice Jesus didn't speak to the leaves. Many of you are speaking to the leaves of your problems and not the root. Yeah. I wonder why the problems still exist. Because the root's still alive. <laughs> Hallelujah. He didn't go get a can of spray. He didn't go get a, a chainsaw. He didn't go get some poison. He spoke nine words and the whole tree dried up at the roots. If you are to be in the right relationship with your creator, it is absolutely necessary to correct your perception and relationship with the energy of desire. It begins by releasing your judgment of all of it in all its form. It begins by releasing your judgment of it in all of its forms. For again, you can only be in, in love or in what? Fear. You can only be in innocence or in judgment. Love and innocence are of the kingdom. Fear and judgment are of illusion. Everyone understand that? Mm. Questions, comments, concerns? Yes. Pastor, a uh, question. Regarding the when Jesus said to the roots of uh -huh. the big tree, when he said it immediately, the roots dry up, or it takes like a few days for it the roots. Been, if you count the hours, it was early in the morning that they woke up, but it took approximately mm -hmm. less than twenty-four hours. We'll say that within twelve hours, that whole tree dried up at the root. Not only did it dry it up, it dried up where everyone noticed it. The Bible says, and Peter noticed the fig tree dried up at the root. There was a reason why, because nowhere in there did Jesus speak the word root. He just says, you shall not produce fruit from me from him anymore. Peter is the one who brought up the root. So he was teaching you, if you have a problem, you need to go to the root of that problem. Mm -hmm. Don't speak to the leaves. Don't fan it. Notice this. Who was astonished? Was Jesus astonished or was Peter and the disciples astonished? <laughs> Peter and the disciples. Why was Jesus not astonished? <laughs> because he knows, because he knows it will work. He knew, he understood desire. He desired because he didn't he didn't curse the tree out of hate. <laughs> he cursed it because it didn't produce fruit. It served no value. Mm -hmm. So if it does not serve value, then it's not importance of you. Why is it here? We can create another tree. And another tree. Yeah. Um, somebody gonna get mad at me, but watch this. He could have said the same nine words and came back 12 hours, and that tree would have been full of figs. <laughs> Hallelujah. I just want y'all to I just want you to see how that works, but he was showing you how to go to the root of your problems. If I have an injury in my body, what do I have to do to heal it? Go to the root of it. Cancer has a root. Amen. Dementia has a root. Yes. Alzheimer's Amen. has a root. Yes. Your lack of finances has a root. Mm -hmm. Let me say this. You are the root. Pastor, me? Yes. Who shall ever say to this mountain, be thou removed? Who's the mountain? Me. It's always who? Me. We always try to blame everybody else, but it's who? Me. Who's the problem? Me. Who's affected by it? Me. Everyone understand? Yeah, you're teaching good today. That's good. Yes. 
Because we want you to understand how desire really works. What do I want and why do I want it? Here comes desire. I want to be clear about what I am asking for. Because when I stick to this root, guess what's going to happen? The expression of my action is going to come forth. Why? Because I believe. Why? Because I don't do the work. God does the work. Step one, ask. Step two, God does the work. Step three, I have to believe that what I've asked for is already done. Jesus, when he spoke it, knew it was already done. This is why he didn't pay that tree no mind. And the Bible says that they heard him. Not overheard. In other words, he went up to this big old tree and spoke audibly loud enough for them to hear because he was not in fear because he knew that what he spoke and decreed it was had to come to pass because that was desire when you desire this is where creation comes forth all creation comes forth from that desire when you create from that place we tell you this everyone around you will be astonished except for you because you will have a knowing of what you want Amen. Amen. So the next time you have a root, we want you to speak to that root. <laughs> yes. All right. Questions, comments, concerns? Anyone else? All right. Who want to lead us out? Don't everybody raise their hand at once. Don't everybody jump at once. <laughs> Trayvon can, can, my son Trayvon, he was called out. <laughs> Hallelujah. Bless his little heart. <laughs> Mom say do a good prayer too. Dear Lord, pray that we can have a good day today. Thank you for the place, have a good service, and uh, yes. pray that we'll have time great to wherever we go. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Once again, we thank you all for taking time out of your schedules. I know we went eight minutes over. My apologies. We try to get on time out of here, but I, this is important. So again, if you have time out of your schedules, please look at the material, share it with others. Um, practice it, ask me questions if there's things that you don't understand, and prayerfully we'll all meet again tomorrow. Tomorrow. So, love you and we thank you all. Yes. Bye, everybody. Bye, everyone. You guys have a blessed day.